finish up a couple of last touches here. We'll be going live here in a minute. Hey, buddy, can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's up, man? All right. How you doing, brother? Sorry about that. Hey, hey it's all right. Take your time, man. Just getting. I had spilled some coffee too, so I, I had to take a minute myself. So. Oh, true, true. Okay, let me just uh, put your channel link in the description here. Still getting new, new to uh, this whole hangout thing and not streaming the link and all that. Oh um, yeah. I get that. All right. So how's it going, man? How's your day? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah, just really lazy here today. Yeah, yeah, an interesting morning myself. All right. Dude, I just like that you got that webcam going. That was dope, man. Hey, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting this all hashed out myself here, too. I got XSplitter working and... We're just uh, getting all set up here. Everybody's gearing up, man, for another night. Oh, yeah. Conversation here. Did it, I overdid it a little last night. Um, I kind of uh, I streamed all night and then didn't really get much sleep and then had to go work all the way till like an hour or two ago. But uh, did you hear what happened to um, Jake last night or Flat Earth Asshole? Yeah, I did, man. I saw that video. That's not cool, man. That's pretty unfortunate, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely not a not a good situation when we're being censored at all. So. Well, and I always myself wonder if what kind of what my videos are gonna what's gonna happen to them. Yesterday I was also in a pretty interesting conversation with uh, Vlad from his channel, yeah. we talking about abortion and stuff. So. Yeah, no, I, d I caught some of that. That was really cool, dude. And I saw you had this, you know, you had the screens and the webcam going. It looked really nice to set up. Yeah, it's fun. You guys had some interesting time, but you were going for a while, right? Yeah, then I went for another hour after you left or so. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right, I'll just give you a minute here. Are you streaming? Yeah, I just set it up. Cool, cool. So. Oh, yeah. Just waiting for uh, more people to show just up. Everybody's just getting uh, getting suited up, man. Heck yeah! Just putting your channel link in the description here. I do that too. It is good to wait a couple minutes, let people filter on in. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to uh, Bob from Globebusters, the um, the production company that's filming the Flat Earth movie with uh, Patricia and Mark Stargent. Um, they're coming down here to Denver, and they want to interview Bob uh, during one of our meetups. So we're going to schedule a meetup around that to make sure it happens. But that's pretty cool. The, the movie should be out in the beginning of uh, 2018. So that's pretty interesting. Oh, wow. That is yeah, cool, man. Yeah, we definitely... Yeah, and they like uh, you know a production company, all product, you know high quality, everything. So that should be really cool to look out for. All right, I'm almost ready here. So annoying! I have this razor mouse, but every time I uh, move a, move it a little bit off the pad, it takes like ten seconds to reorient itself. I don't know what the problem is. All right, and OBS, and then we'll be live. I never cooked brown rice before at home and it's not quite as done as I had hoped but it's oh still, yeah it's still spicy and it's all right but how do I like, this is the only problem I have is uh, is hiding this stupid link I haven't figured out how to uh stream it so it doesn't show the link but I think I got mm. it here all right Okay, and I'm starting up the stream. Very cool.
Yeah, dude. So the, the basic idea is I wanted to give you, um, I wanted to start the series with the called Critical Interview, and I just wanted to give you kind of an opportunity to, uh, you know, lay out your approach and what you're trying to accomplish and uh, a few other questions and stuff. Maybe keep it short between like an hour. Yeah. You know, if we go over a little bit, that's fine, hour and a half. And then, uh, you know, I want to uh, put them onto iTunes and then just, you know, put them on a couple different platforms. So this uh, it's really more about uh, this one. If it's cool, it would be more about you and your approach and your experiences. If that's okay with you. Yeah, definitely, man. I, I, I would love to share some, you know, ways that I go about it and then they can and then people can kind of add their own flair to it you know because I don't I don't do everything right I know that there's a lot of people that would say I probably do it this way differently and uh, I encourage them I encourage them to add their own flair to it and kind of we all meet in the middle (laughs) yeah exactly exactly so let me just pull up my chat my phone and I think we are good to go all right you're live everything's good on your end yes sir yeah all right cool Okay, so um, okay, so I'm here with uh, with Joshua, authentic Joshua, or authentic intent, and uh, this is critical interview number one, and we're going to uh, just try and uh, get his experiences and uh, his approaches, and uh, just talk with him in general about uh, about a few different things. So how's it going, man? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I, you know, I don't even know your name. Let's let me get your your first name if it's, you don't mind, but. Yeah, Jimmy, 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 and it's Joshua, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I didn't know if it was Josh. Joshua. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's yeah. So um, how's everything going today, man? Uh, doing well. It's it's about to rain, um, so it's been cooling off a little bit. But I got some good food I've been making up. I made some noodles earlier today, and I got some brown rice going right now. So nice. Man. We're filling the. We're, it's a first world problem. Have a full stomach. So. Yeah, dude, and that's so important too is uh, what you put in your body. And I'm actually doing the same myself, uh, trying to really watch what's going in, dude. And it's actually really hard. You have to go out of your way to make sure you're not, you know, you have to make like a lot of conscious decision to, uh, to you know, it's more money, you know, and it's uh, it's definitely interesting. You have to go out of your way to make sure you're not putting all this trash in your body, you know. Yep. Yeah, you do. It is, it's a decision that you have to make every day, and it's a commitment, too, because I know a lot of people, they go through their diet phase, they go through the things that they should fast off of, but, you know, it's just, I just can't encourage people enough, and it all starts with drinking good water, too, and uh, I know that some people have their ideas about distilled water, ionized water, and all that stuff. But, you know, as of now, that's just where I'm at with distilled water. I don't have an ionizer or anything like that. So if you can just start changing your diet with water and then try to wean yourself away from those carbonated drinks and um, fake juices, it's a good start. And cow milk, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, unless it's uh, unless it's your cow. You know yeah, I mean? right, exactly. Because you know it's, where it's coming from. Yeah, and it's funny, too, because uh, my family's from Ireland. I actually have dual citizenship there, but when you go, I haven't been there in a while, but when you go there, at least this it was a decade ago. It could be different now, you know, with the EU and all this stuff, but when I went there, you just, whatever you're eating, and Ireland is not known for its exquisite cuisine or anything, but everything is just, it feels like food should be because it's not pumped up with garbage yeah it's coming from a farm down the street you know what i mean and it's and it really makes a difference i don't i don't feel i feel terrible after i eat some of the stuff that's just people are eating every day um and it's just it's really crazy man to think about yep. i think that's one of our biggest problems is that is processed food and the crap they're putting in it you know and it's so hard for people to actually eat healthy and a lot of people can't afford it. I mean, some places, some supermarkets, organic is double the price, mm-hmm. you know? It's insane. Um, but anyway, so uh, I wanted to just kind of uh, go uh, into um, your side of this and I wanted to give you kind of a little platform to kind of um, lay out what, uh, where you see this going and your different approaches. So. Um, for people that don't know, I just want to give like a brief uh, background. What is a uh, what has your been, what is kind of your approach to this whole thing, and how did you wake up to it, and uh, you know where it's at right now? So, uh, it took me a while. I mean, a really long time to get confident where I'm at right now. 
I was very quiet in high school. I didn't have very many friends, kind of really kept to myself and just didn't really, uh, you know, match up with people. I always felt like I could get along with people, but like having them as close friends, that was more of a challenge for me. And I, when I graduated high school, I didn't really have um, much of a, you know, focus on anything. And so I started just cooking and I was hanging out in the back. I really liked food, you know, and I eat all the time anyway. So uh, I was kind of in the back background a little bit, observing, really watching, um, kind of lurking. <laughs> you know, I got, uh, you got, uh, you know, um, seven people watching, one person's talking, right? So you got five or six lurkers. I got, we got 24 over here and we got, so 20 lurkers, you know, and I'm a lurker. I was a lurker growing up, you know, so I just observed and I got a job when I was about 20 years old, 21 years old, uh, going door to door sales, selling coupon books. Okay. And I sold coupon books for about a year. Papa John's, you know, 25 bucks for this coupon book where you get two free pizzas right away. And it pays for itself. If you plan on eating two pizzas in the next six months, I mean, here you go. And yeah, after that, wow. you know, you you got buy one, get ones for the next year. So it was $10 commission going door to door, you know. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that you're going to run across who are into it and just who really aren't. And it was a pyramid type of scheme. So, you know, there's not really uh, not really a whole lot of, uh, you know, you know, promotion, if you will, unless, you know, you were that type of person that really wanted to get to that point and that level. And I guess I didn't, didn't want it enough. And, but I enjoyed the people and I enjoyed the interactions with the public and whatnot. And so got it, got rid of that. A couple years later, probably, well, a number of years later, when I was about, I don't know, 26, 27, is when the uh, Xbox Connect came out, you know, that camera. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got one. I'm, okay. I was really big into gaming. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a, I was a, I'm a big, pretty big gamer, too, myself. And so I had stumbled upon the opportunity to sell the Connect when it had first launched. They actually flew me out to Seattle, Washington for a, for a weekend for a conference to kind of hang out with the big wigs of Microsoft. Oh, and, cool. Yeah. Got an idea of how to play with it and everything, and we were there two weeks before it debuted here in the country, and so it was a really spectacular experience. And once I was done with that, we came back to Minnesota, and I um, Best Buy is the electronic um, headquarters here in Minnesota, and there are some throughout the United States, but mostly here in the Midwest, Best Buy is the electronic you know store here. And I had five Best Buy, four or five Best Buys that I would go to Thursday through Sunday, six to eight hour gigs. And I mean, they were paying pretty good money, like 20 bucks an hour, you know, to hang out in Best Buy with like a demo set already oh, prepared. Oh, okay, cool. And then show people and kind of show people the features and everything. Yeah. And so, man, that was awesome. Going through the first Christmas of doing that, it was so awesome because... You're, I got, you know, Xbox Live, three-month passes. I'd challenge people, say, hey, you know, you think you can beat me in, you know, a dance-off? Let's play. And I'd, <laughs> I'd still give it to them, but I'd have the, the Michael Jackson playing or all the various other, you know, songs that were on Just Dance or um, all these other, you know, dance games. And so I did that for 18 months. So I did that from that first 2007 Christmas all the way up until – or 2008 Christmas all the way up until the next Christmas. And that's all I did. I just hung out in Best Buy and talked to the public. I was It was sales, you know, so I was selling Xbox 360s. And so that was a pro, that was, that was progression, you know. I, but I'm, I'm still hanging out in the background, you know. I'm still studying. Um, you know, 9-11 comes up. I start talking um, to people about that. And just getting familiar with, you know, what people in the public think about that type of stuff. And it is a labeled as a conspiracy. I mean, a lot of people, believe it or not, believe the official commission report. And so I guess um, when I got back from Thailand in 2000, late 2015, actually right around this date two years ago, um, I had a reality check big time. 
and it was the culture of being in Southeast Asia for eight months and then coming back to America and just realizing how incredibly well off we are and how much uh, this country takes it for granted. And we yeah. really don't know how well we have it here. Um, people complain about uh, taking a lukewarm shower and eating cold food, but you know, I'll eat, I'll let this, my food here chill for a while and then I'll eat it cold later and I won't have a problem with it. But you know, it's first world problems for sure. And I just started, you know, slowly waking up and getting more uh, confidence in wanting to, you know, be a voice for other people that, you know, just don't have that, I guess, that they're on the fence, even just to talk yeah. about that stuff with friends and family, but to go out in public and talk about it. Um, I guess that's from my experience of teaching English when I was in Thailand for eight months. I, I had a classroom setting. I had ages of, you know, elementary school kids, well, not, probably junior high kids, all the way up until like 67, I think was my oldest lady. And she's trying to learn English at 67 years old. And oh, well. yeah, so they love English over there and they loved me because I was a white Caucasian guy, right? And they, uh, Asian people just have this thing for white guys and it, it helped me, you know, it helped me get kind of an in to teach English yeah. and to get comfortable with that setting. And, um, it's probably a very eye opening experience, you know, it really was, man. I mean, I'm walking by as I'm walking to school. I got people begging for food who have one leg and one arm, um, yeah. ladies holding her baby, you know, who's deformed, man, it's really heartbreaking. And so, and then you walk across the street and they have malls in Bangkok that are bigger than the mall of America here in Minnesota. So and well, they have that's them, a big disconnect. Yeah. And they have them everywhere. And it's just, wow. Like the Western civilization really creeped into this culture and you know, I'm, I'm doing the chemtrail thing. I start doing like the gematria with professional sports. And then I start investigating my own cystic fibrosis foundation. And I see some, uh, you know, just some things that really made me feel uncomfortable. And I'm driving home uh, late, you know, 2015. And I hear an Eric Dubé video. And I'm here, I yeah. just get it while I'm driving, you know. And I don't do this at home, children. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm tooling around with YouTube. And then I see this video pop up on my recommendations. And I'm listening to it as I'm driving. And it just sounds bizarre but it just sounds like there's something more to it you know like i didn't become a flat earther right away and then i listen to a lot of stuff i get start watching the videos for a number of months and then last winter i actually walked away from it for a couple of months you know because i was just like this is too overwhelming this is i don't want to be a part of this like this this is the end all to be all of just deception and lies and how we got to where we're at, how people believe what they believe and a person's thought life is where it's at. And I just, I, I, I guess I kind of just woke up one day and I got, I quit my job at the time too. And, um, <laughs> in mid to early April of this year, and after talking about conspiracies to coworkers and stuff about, you know, hey, Flat Earth, check it out, and getting mocked and ridiculed at work, I, I just felt like I didn't belong in the corporate setting of work. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the W-2. The 9 to 5. 9 to 5, you know, and whatnot, because I just, I didn't feel comfortable there. And I actually just, I quit on the spot. And then that following week, that following weekend, was April 22nd, Earth Day, March for Science, down at my oh, state wow. capitol. And it never crossed my mind that that was my plan to go there. But I literally woke up that morning and I said, let's do it. Let's go live on Facebook. And I didn't have, I had, my stuff wasn't laminated or anything. I just kind of came up with just some corny phrase. Um, if we really landed on the moon, we'd have a McDonald's on it. And I just, I exactly. stood there. And the intersection, and I just watched this swarm of people walk by me and just praising science, and it didn't make sense to me. Um, and that's, I guess that's kind of how it started. And I didn't start it to make views. I didn't start it because I thought I was going to make money. I just, 
at that time when I did that that day, I just felt like it was something I had to do. And I loved doing it. I loved the interactions with people. I felt like I only had to be as smart as the people that I was talking to. And we're all really not that smart if we all graduated from high school, you know. And sure. as a flat earther, you do become more aware of your surroundings. And it's, it's just an unbelievable experience. And I just encourage everybody, if they have an opportunity, to just take that step. Take that uncomfortable step of talking to somebody that you wouldn't think would ever want to hear it because we're not we don't walk around with um, stripes on our back whether or not we're going to listen to truth or not you just have to present it and some people are ready to hear it and they're waiting for you the the truther to talk to them about it yeah absolutely and you know it's, it's interesting too because it's always different for everybody like i always say this but for everybody, it's there's going to be one thing. Somebody might study it for six months thinking it's crazy and then hear one thing. It might be a Bible verse. It might be um, an interview with a, with a military expert. It might be um, a part of Globebusters, you know, um, busting down the ISS footage. For every person, it's different. And just you being out there and engaging them, like you have a very... You have a very approachable. You seem very approachable, and you 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 know you you're you're polite. You, you're very civil. You know your arguments, and uh, I just I love watching you, man. You do a very good job with what you do. You know what I mean. And uh, people sometimes um, people uh, can get turned off if you're too. I don't know how to explain it, but I just just trying to say you, you have a very good approach in the way you approach people. You kind of kind of seem like you know. Who's you kind of have? It seems like you have this feeling of you know who's ready to hear it, and you know who's kind of just like not even gonna just don't even bother going there with them. How do you kind of make that distinction? Um, yeah, it's a, it's instinct, it's discernment, it's just because there's some people that just walk, walk, I let walk by, you know, I have yeah. no, I have no interest in talking to them, it's not their time. Um, if I'm walking away from a particular spot and people come coming at me it's it's not their time you know so yeah. it's it's a discernment thing it's um just a, a a feeling that you get and i have always i, I wouldn't say always but I, I have grown to to like the idea that if i'm speaking truth to them and i and i have an uh, authentic intent right if i have an intent to want them to know the truth in the future, whether it's from me or from somebody else reaffirming what I just told them, my words aren't going to return void. And so with that being said, when I do have interactions with somebody who is hard headed or refuses to listen to what I have to say, they still needed to hear what I had to say. Just as much yeah. as the people that I have good conversations with and we handshake and we agree to disagree or they even ac agree to go home and check stuff out. We always have to have that mindset that you are talking to this person for a reason and it was always meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing too. And I tell people, you know, even if somebody, uh, even if somebody's foaming at the mouth, because I come into this a lot too, and uh, especially at work too, I'll get a coworker here and there that'll literally be foaming at the mouth. But what you don't realize is that all you – I kind of think about it like a giant steampunk machine, right, in their brain. You don't need to get in there and uh, turn the gears yourself. All you have to do is, is kind of give that first little gear a little kick. You know what I mean? Just a little kick. Just get them quite thinking a little bit outside their kind of comfort zone. Because I think this idea, and I've said it before, I think a lot of people are content with being led around by their tail. So as long as they have their Netflix, their you know their football or whatever it is, their you know their Budweiser, whatever the heck it is that's keeping them you know locked into a locked into not looking further, it's just um, some of them have never thought about any of these. So you have some people that are coming into this, and it flat, and flat Earth is the first thing they see, and then they get into big pharma, and then they get into other other aspects of uh, of truth and uh, reality so it's just very interesting the dichotomy that uh different people man i don't know so i guess like you said some people are ready to hear it some people are aren't what have what have been some of your more um 
uh, successful approaches. What do you What do you think um, has been your strong points as far as uh, as far as um, being on the street? Um, that's a good question because it it just some people are approachable. When I hit them in the mouth with, "Hey, you know, did you know that the Earth is flat and not a ball like we're taught?" or you know, satellites don't exist. Um, I think that the younger people, you know, people that are still kind of maybe in the college-ish age, the millennials, they are the most responsive. And then you have the kids, like the junior high kids under 18. They are mo even more so inquisitive. Um, and I think that's the most encouraging part is to be able to challenge that narrative with them while they're out of school right now in the fall. When the fall comes, they'll they'll be able to have had maybe a month or two of invested in checking some of this stuff out. Um, I think like my my most my most positive approaches, even though I don't like them the most, are groups of over three, four, or five. To be honest with you, even though I try to stay away from that herd mentality because. Typically, I have found that if there's one person who rejects what I have to say, they can kind of like spew into the other four people and they don't want to hear it, but they're curious. But because this person doesn't want to hear anything, um, they kind of just say, yeah, just go away. But if I can get just you know, like two people really interested in hearing what uh, I have to say, then it kind of helps get the rest of the group together um, like for example I was at Lake Harriet and I I talked to their teacher right there's these kids and I went before I went into the flower garden there's this group of kids and then their teacher walks by and I challenged him to research flat earth in his own time and I, I asked him does water curve around a ball you know show me show me in this picture of 130,000 feet you know much like the one that's here on my screen where's the curvature there man and just by engaging and challenging him, their teacher, I think that, what was it, like seven of them, they were really intrigued. And they didn't clearly believe what I had to say, but I think for me going out in public, instead of them reading something, you know, maybe on a billboard or a t-shirt or whatever, but just engaging with them and, and just saying something and just planting a seed, I think that's just really the overall best way because the I think the thing that I like about humans and I think that most of us would agree is that we're so unpredictable and there's no artificial intelligence that's going to be able to put its finger on us to determine whether we're going to do the same thing tomorrow or even next week like buy something that we're addicted to like coffee because yeah. some people can wake up the next day and say this is my last cup of coffee because yep. I'm making a choice, you know, but a computer is not going to be able to, you know, analyze that, you know, or whatever and predict that they're going to wake up the next morning and fall to, you know, drinking coffee again. So I just encourage everybody out there that you just, you never know what you're going to get. And you just, you, you got to feel people out. If you know that you're going to see somebody the next day, you know, maybe allow some time to just kind of get to know them for a couple of days. But you know, when you know, like, for example, with my dentist, I'm getting to know him a little bit and I'm going to go in for a couple more fillings in the future. But that last visit, I'm definitely going to hit him up and just be like, hey, so I gave you my card like a month ago or two months ago. And did you ever check out those videos? You know, yeah. well, check them out, you know, and just let me know what you think, since this is the last time we're going to see each other. So, yeah, that's really cool, man. And I think you're right about that, too. The uh, being... I think we can kind of get stuck in a little bit of an echo chamber here on YouTube if we're not careful. You know what I mean? And I think when I, I kind of came at the same approach. I, I was, I looked into it and I just consumed all the content I could for a very long time without ever engaging in chat. I would just consume every video ODD had, every video Eric Dubay had, every video Mark Sargent had, every video Globusters had. I would just consume as much content as I could. But 
when I saw that the meetups were happening in Fort Collins, it really started to intrigue me, and I was wondering why one wasn't happening in Denver, and I waited, and I kind of waited for a while, because I thought maybe, you know, somebody out here in Denver that actually is, you know, a, a creator, a content creator, maybe someone will, one will do it, and, you know, I didn't see it happening, so I just started one myself, but I didn't know what to expect, so the first meetup, we did it in public, and it's a little local, little local pub called uh, Gibby's. And I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if some, you know, drunk globy or, you know, whatever, some drunk sleep person was going to come and foam at the mouth. But I was so <laughs> surprised. It was, yeah, it was amazing. Nobody bothered us. And then, uh, like, 25 people came out. We had an amazing time. And that's – and a lot of people told me they were like, you know, it, it's empowering to see people out in public – um, not afraid to talk about it, and not afraid to just go along with the uh, with the herd, and and deviate from the herd, but not in private, in public. And still, we haven't we've never really had any problems in any of the meetups with anybody, um, you know, foaming at the mouth or any of these things. And uh, I think it's powerful to do that because when people see that you're out and you're confident in your arguments and you're confident, smart, intelligent, and open minded, they're they're they lose a little bit of that fear about talking about subjects that maybe are a little, um, a little out of you know, a little out there from their perspective. So, the that's very cool and that's very powerful that you continue to do what you're doing. Um, do you have any um plans for new ideas and your approaches, or are you gonna? I mean, what you do is amazing. I was just uh, I've, this is your interview, so I kind of want to give you a little bit of a platform to say where you want to kind of take this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've taken some into consideration um, how I approach and whatnot, and I, I plan on this next week with the University of Minnesota starting up their classes. I'm going to set up a booth, and I'm going to allow students to come to me. I'm going to have my laptop set up and four variations of DVDs. So I'm going to have, like, you know, a popular player in the flat earth community i'm gonna have their dvd set up i'm gonna have like a best of for myself i'm gonna have um some flat earth proofs and then some with some nasa fakery inside of there and then some 9-11 stuff too because we're coming up on 9-11 and i think 9-11 yeah. is another uh imminent truth that people have to be aware of that aren't aware of at the moment and as much as flat earth might set people over, people get set over to truth uh, because of 9-11 too. So I'm going to have some DVDs set up all there for that. I'll have some you know, paraphernalia and other propaganda and paper form for people to be able to take away. And then I'll have my laptop set up so that we can watch the uh, ISS live stream or you know, whatever it is that we got going on and just show them like, hey, how come I have this you know, screen here, they're zoomed in on the moon, and let's just hang out here for five minutes. All those 2,500 satellites, we should be able to see a satellite zoom by, right? Because no. I've been sent videos by people saying that that's the ISS going by the moon. I've been sent dots, you know, traveling in front of the moon or whatever, and they say, well, what is that? You know, and I'm like, I don't know, it's a dot. So, and they yeah. try to convince me that it's a satellite. So, if they can catch that in front of the moon just for a few moments, then if I set it up and I, and I let one of these videos with somebody zoomed in with a P900 on the moon, we should see something go by the moon eventually, right? So, yeah, if, and especially if they're saying that we can see and we can see these craters with our naked eye that are only 30, 40 kilometers wide. You know what I mean? And then that, the disconnect between the sizes and what we should see, is it makes no sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's really bizarre. So, yeah, I um, – so that will be now, new. You, yeah, no, go ahead. Do you need a special – I'm sorry. Do you need a special permit or something to uh, to set up a booth like that on the college campus? Do you have to kind of do it off property? Can you do it on property or what is uh, – what's the issues with that? Uh, no. Mm -mm. Uh, in you can just do it wherever? Yeah, just set it up. You know, oh, that's cool, man. That's yeah. really cool. So you might even get a, a head of a department or a professor. <laughs> yeah, out I mean, there, you know? have somebody come by who who wants to even just grab the information just to look at it and then come back and challenge me or something like that. I mean, 
because you'll have people that want to see what I'm up to and just grab it to grab it to see what I'm up to, you know, but yeah. and I have no problem with that. And it, cause then they're at least taking it and looking at it. And so, um, the booth thing will, you know, quite a quote be new for what I, what I do, because I do want to, I want to, you know, it's not like I want to answer the detractors or answer to the naysayers or anything, but I do want to present that and say, look, I can do this. You know, I'm not a one trick pony. You know, I, I do. Yeah. If somebody gives me an idea and I feel comfortable and confident about that, um, just like the flat cab idea, you know, that came yeah, up I in see. the IPS chat and, you know, whether he was just speaking off off the top of his head or if he was serious about it, um, it's all speak until somebody commits to do something like that. And so that's the thing about the establishment is they don't, just talk about stuff (laughs) they they execute they have a plan and then they execute that plan and i think that there's a lot of people in this community that like you were saying before um getting comfortable talking on youtube and being a keyboard warrior is one thing but when you actually physically go out and even if you meet other people who are flat earthers that's taking it to another level because then you know for sure you're not alone yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of why I had, you know, that's why my real name is out there. You know, I'm just a regular person. When people see that, it's empowering because there's no reason that any of us should be asking these questions. Like, I'm not going to be made to feel like I'm doing something wrong. And I think a lot of people, they're fine talking on YouTube, but they're never, you know, a lot of people are very scared of going out there to their friends, their families, their coworkers, and be, and talk about this. And I'm sure... A lot of the people that engage in uh, in this chat on YouTube, they won't do that. They won't mention it in public. So the more that we people that we can show that, the, hey, man, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. It's it's empowering. So um, another thing I was going to ask is out of the um, – for me um, personally, um, there's a lot of different things that have sparked, sparked my interest into why this is uh, – why we need to investigate the nature of our reality. But the big ones for me were really the lack. It's the lack of things. It's the lack of things that we're seeing. It's the lack of footage of an astronaut going in and out of an airlock hatch. It's the lack of footage of uh, an astronaut um, doing a 360 pan of, of, uh, of like, there's no, why haven't we just seen an astronaut, you know, take a camera and just look around outside of the atmosphere we've never seen that and for me personally that makes no sense if we supposedly landed on the moon 49 50 years ago with technology that was at its infancy we're talking mechanical based binary computers they had not you can you can buy a a 20 30 dollar piece of electronics from walmart that had 10 20 30 times the computer power that we had in 1969 so the disconnect between oh yeah we you know we went up there and we're doing all these things there but no there's just too many anomalies and Globusters was a big one breaking down the inconsistencies in the ISS footage what for you personally um for you personally what were some of the arguments that kind of like you know solidified it for you and then also what arguments work best in your opinion when you're out on the street yeah the the one that just, uh, <laughs> I, I, and I don't understand why this is such a, a problem for a lot of a lot of people. But the the 52 mile skyline of the of Chicago, and then most recently the Rogers Center in Toronto, over Lake Ontario. If if and the um what's her face the Statue of Liberty can see be seen from something like 60 70 miles also. Yeah. Lighthouses. Um, there, there just isn't any curvature to water. Like there's, there's no way that water is bending over like a ball. And yeah, th- from that, the NASA fakery becomes overwhelming. How I never saw it before. You know, I have the blue marble. I used to have that on my screensaver before. Uh, before I sold my computer and my TV and everything, and then I splitsville to Thailand, <laughs> that looked that looked like a real picture to me. 
You know, like, that looked like a real picture to me. And I would look at it, and I was, a, you know, I'm still a Christian, and I would look at that, and I would be like, that's the view that God has, you know, all the time. You know, yeah. so, like, how magnificent is that? And so to have that taken away from me and have that that humbling moment where you're just like, wow, like, I actually believed that was like a marble floating in outer space. It, it really infuriated me, and it actually led to some depression, um, to be honest with you. And that's one of the reasons why I walked away from Flat Earth is because I, I just couldn't believe how naive and deceived I was, and I fell for it. I, I was the butt of the joke, and I, that was one of the things that helped spark um, where I'm at right now and where I hope most people will get to in the future is that you were lied to. Like, you were lied to. You were lied. Yep. You were deceived. And they use fakery about the ISS and how they launch spacecraft and the Challenger about how dangerous it is for us to send people to the moon and to outer space, that we have to have another plan. Like, that was all a narrative to keep us in the dark about the lie. Like, we were lied to. Like, I can't even, I, I just, in my human words, I can't express, like, how naive and depressed I felt about knowing that that was just unbelievably deceptive for them. And they continue to do it. And yeah. I tell people, yeah, satellites don't exist. And I can point them in the direction of some news articles that I feel, in my opinion, are very damaging and try to convince them about GPS and ground towers and, um, you know, the pointing towers, how, you know, P-O-Y-N-T-S-I-N-G, like pointing towers, like when there's a, a tower that can't see over a, a, a mountain or a hill, that's what they use for 3G and 4G technology. It's like, <laughs> there are no, there's nothing orbiting us. And for... Nothing. For the trolls and the and the people that are part of this narrative who have been in this community for the last three years, I I feel even more sorry for them because they're pushing a narrative that they know is a lie, and they're willingly going along with it. And then they even get to the point of saying, "I give up because you all are retarded," so I'm not even going to debate you guys anymore. But I'll go into your chats and snipe you, like, because that's fun to do. Because I know yeah, YouTube right. isn't going to do anything about it. And yeah. that's even more disheartening and disappointing that YouTube and Google can sit back and allow this to continue. But it just happens to the Flat Earth community. Yeah. If it, if it happened in the gaming community, it wouldn't be allowed. If it happened in any other aspect of YouTube, it would not be tolerated. But because... It is. I, I haven't seen anybody get any kind of reper, you know, repercussions for sniping. Yep. You know what I mean? Or for, you know, doing some of these pretty terrible things that we're hearing about. I haven't. It, and so we're, you know, we have, we, we, we kind of have an uphill battle with, with, uh, with some of the platforms we're using and it's, it's not easy, man. It's, it's really not. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's really, um, it, these kids, man, I'm telling these kids, they're lying. They continue to lie to the kids. So I started up, you know, I've had a Twitch account for a while because I'm a gamer and whatnot. And I really got into um, gaming and whatnot. And I used to have a Xbox One and I played uh, Star Wars Battlefront when that was re-released. And I talk about Flat Earth and I talk about, you know, the fakery that NASA does. <laughs> and it's, it's a hard platform to talk to kids about fake NASA because yeah. they're so prideful and arrogant about their education and their school that for some guy on the other side of a microphone to say that what they're being taught is fake, you know, they rage about that. You know, yeah. it's like I'm owning you in this game, but I'm also, you know, giving you knowledge about the fakery that's going on. And so it's, it's the kids that just they believe everything that they hear from the authority. And that authority is the establishment run through our educational system. 
Yeah, absolutely, man. It's 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 crazy. You talk to some of these people. I was talking with somebody. I won't name names, um, but uh, he was telling me about you know uh, the satellites and and the orbital orbital mechanics and this and that and uh, you know they've got to readjust. You know they've got to readjust and they need the fuel to do it. And I said, okay, show me a show me a video of a, of them going up to refuel one of these things. You're telling me they constantly have to adjust. Where's the video of them refueling them? And then on top of that, if there's all these satellites up there and they need maintenance, how come there isn't some kind of craft like a like a little docking? Like how come the ISS's job isn't up there? How come you don't see them coming up to a satellite, coming next to it and working on it? You know what I mean? Refueling it, maybe in some kind of a dock and then letting it go again. You don't see these basic things that we should be seeing and we're told Oh, oh, you know, you'll talk to some people and they'll be like, well, we didn't land on the moon, but we went there secretly. And then you talk to other people, well, you know, it's, it's just the disconnect and the double think out there that we have to contend with is, is pretty real. The double thing to think that you never, the double thing to think that we went to the moon 49 years ago with ancient computer technology, and let's be real, it, it was in its infancy the disconnect between that we went there 49 years ago and we didn't go there and, and we can't go now. How do you, how, I mean, I don't understand how people mesh those two things together. If we went to the moon 50 years ago, I can guarantee you it would have already been, it would be covered in military bases by now. You know what I mean? And I mean, just the, the disconnect, it makes no sense. Um, so how do you kind of break through, through to that with people? Is the, um, I, the signs you have are very interesting. I really like that approach too. Just having something to show them, you know, mm -hmm. having something to spark that little bit of that little bit of thought in them, um, is very powerful. So, it's it's an uphill battle, man. You know. Yeah, and it's it's gonna be an uphill battle because we're fighting against decades of brainwashing that we ourselves are just now slowly lifting the veil. And there's a lot of people who claim to be woke, and they're being deceived in the flat Earth community right now. And so yes. it, you, you got to hit them where it counts. And if you take away space and set and you let them know that the satellites that we are using are, I mean, I get that all the time. Satellites don't exist. Well, how are you using your phone, dude? GPS day. And it's like, he's, he just doesn't know. She just is yeah. uninformed. Um, you got to meet people where they're at. You, and I know a lot of people would say, God, you sound so condescending, dude. You're such a jerk to people. Uh, you're so patronizing. Like, yeah, see, you're patronizing. You know, now you're, yeah, I am patronizing now, dude, because you, you're making it seem like this is like my belief and you're trying to convince me back into uh, the, the fold or something like that. And yeah. so you got to, I know it sounds like, you are being patronizing or it sounds like you're being condescending, but you just got to say, Hey man, I know, I just, I know where you're at. I, I understand that you're here. And then I point at this buildings behind them and that's the university of Minnesota. Like you're paying for the exact opposite of what I'm trying to tell you here. So the, the signage, as I continue through this year, is going to become more provocative. It's going to become more um, kind of take a link off the chain, you know? Yeah. And I, I think I got to kind of be a little bit more aggressive with these people because I know that there's a spirit out there that is becoming aware of us, but it's becoming more and more aware of those who are putting their foot down, who do have a right intent with the words that they speak and a lot of us flat earthers understand that when we speak things out into this reality that we live in there is intent to that and so Absolutely. if if your intent is is being uninformed and ignorant but you're saying it anyways but your intent in your heart is truth it's going to go a long way so with that being said how much more so are your truth the the truth in your words gonna go if you are informed if you do understand what you're saying if you do care about these people that you're talking to because you don't want yeah. them deceived anymore and you don't want the santa claus easter bunny lie to continue it's gonna verberate not only through them but through the walls of the people um in these buildings and 
eventually this collective that we have, the people that aren't true to what they claim to be right now, they're going to fall away and we're going to see those people for who they are. And yeah. I just encourage people to always just, even though we call ourselves awake, you got to still have discernment about the people yeah. that, you know, you're following, the people that you're listening to, the, you know, the videos that you watch, because even the new flat earthers that are coming in right now, that, those are the, the people that we should be most concerned about, because those are the most vulnerable to the various things that are happening that we're, you know, the, the ones that have been in this community for a couple of years, understand the quote drama, how, you know, yeah. things circulate, how, um, you know, relations have had, relationships have been and how, you know, particular people, you know, go. So we gotta, we gotta try to, you know, reel some of these new flat earthers in because they're the ones that are lurking. They're the ones that are sitting back yeah. and watching. Yeah, there's a reason you have, you know, not me personally, but there's a reason you'll see a chat with 300 people and 50 are speaking. That means 250 are just listening. Right. They're just listening. You know what I mean? And I, and I don't think a lot of people understand that, especially with the live streams. I don't think a lot of people understand. They read the chat, and they. I don't think a lot of people understand that there are people listening in the background. Like you said, you just uh, – consume you would lurk same thing i would consume i would lurk and i think um we have to be careful um i think isa said it best or flat earth, flat earth court shout out to flat earth court yeah you said that, uh um these people are kind of you know when you first realize that you're being deceived because me personally i've been part of the so so-called truth or movement for a long time i mean over a decade so you can you always think that you're you know totally awake and totally awake but you have to admit to yourself that we don't know anything and it's in and i don't i don't care if you're the most knowledgeable flat earther out there you you know you don't nothing is set in stone you know and i don't and, and i think a lot of people fall into this dogmatic trap where they think that they have it all figured out you know what i mean and i think that's a problem and then i also think another problem is you know some people come into this and you know they might have turned their netflix off you know in the drama and they might have turned that stuff off but then they come into this and they get sucked up into the drama and they replace the drama of netflix for the drama of flat earth instead of actually trying to just engage in ideas and solutions it's just oh he said she said he said she said and people kind of fall into that trap again of just talking about that i see it i see 50% of the people in some of these live streams that are, you know, I, that are just uh, just caught up in the drama. And I think that's that you're right. And especially if a new a new person comes into this and sees some of that, that might turn them off, you know? Yeah. And the other side of the coin is no matter where you go, no matter what profession you're in, what job title you have, humans are humans and they're going to create drama, <laughs> you know? That's what we do. We, we have jealousy, we have bitterness, we have anger, we have happiness, we have envy, we have sadness. I mean, when you add m humans who are both male and female with their both emotional uh, qualifications, characteristics, and everything else, you're going to have drama. But this particular, particular topic in itself does have a slight narrative to it. It does have people who are are trying to kind of keep all of the toothpaste in the tube, and some of it's coming out, you know. Yeah, and then you have those people that half of the they let half of it out, and they're still stuck in these. Oh well, we didn't go to the moon, but we went there secretly. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So we, yeah. There's, there's a, <laughs> no, if we like, went there we secretly, how do you know we went there secretly, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you get into the whole like purple pill thing, but uh, it's, <laughs> right. it, 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 you know what I mean? So it's definitely, it's definitely interesting. I just, for me personally, I just want to see, uh, I just want to be, I don't, if I'm talking to you on the street, I don't care if you necessarily believe, you know, fall and then become a flat earther. All I want you to do is just question things and just kind of realize that there is a massive amount of deception and there's a massive amount of, uh, things that are thrown at people to keep them completely 100% distracted from progressing. We're not, if, I mean, we need to be investigating other things. Like that's why Tesla was always a really big one for me. We need to be just 
investigating these uh, other aspects of our reality and it, it's sad to see it's sad to see people that can't break away from that they can't break away if you if you're watching cnn and you're watching any mainstream news and you don't know that you're being lied to deceived and divided i don't know what to do. it's it's very hard for me to have a conversation with you because you're being led by the tail, and I'm, all I'm asking you to do is just turn around and, and look at the information you're getting and understand that there is an agenda behind it. This whole divide and conquer, and even, you know, I won't speak on it too much, but the recent things that are going on, it's, it's just such an obvious pushed agenda to keep us pigeonholed and to keep us thinking one way. And asking people to break free from that, we have to understand that it's going to be a hard some people aren't are going to have a like you said it's very shocking you i mean you said you had your own issues i had my own issues it is it's very shocking to realize that hey you know i accepted all these things as co total fact and now i'm looking at it with a different eye and things aren't making sense so i think we should remember that yep yeah you don't know where anybody's at you don't know what it's going to take for them to kind of get over the fence and just little just like a question hey you know 9-11's coming up what do you what do you think happened like 16 years ago i mean that's pretty pretty bizarre huh you know just yeah. i don't know come at it with it you know like when i was doing the flat cab on the way back home the other night i kind of went at it at that angle you know i was like hey you know like, what, do you, what do you think about these flat earthers man like that's really bizarre huh the earth is flat i mean come on you know and that's a good way to come at it too you know we went at it you know for the next 30 minutes and and I gave him a DVD with my card in it, you know, so nice. who knows where he's at right now, you know, hey, Lewis, <laughs> but <laughs> you never know what it's going to take and, and you can come at it from a different angle, you know, you, you don't have to be like all gung-ho flat earther, you could say, hey, you know, come on, the earth is flat, like, I mean, we went to the moon, right, so like, how could the earth be flat, I mean, we have pictures of it, right? And, <laughs> and, and then go at it with that angle, but then leave them with information that then you can walk away from them and then they can go investigate it on their own time, you know, or you can say, I'm just kidding. You know, I believe I'm a flat earther or whatever, you know, it's up to you. But, um, I, I just felt when I was starting at the beginning, I was walking away from these people and I wasn't giving them any material. So then I started cutting up, you know, eight by 11 printer paper you know, with people's uh, videos and whatnot and just handing those out. And then Project Eli, Robin, thank you very much for the cards. And now I have like a, a quote, professional looking, um, you know, uh, takeaway. You know, I can give that yeah. and just walk away. So absolutely. And, and, you know, there are some people, too, that are just, you know, running down the street and they got to make it to work. So having something to give them to watch later or give them to look at later is powerful, too. Mm -hmm. Give them direction. You know, a lot of people, a lot of the, we call them sheep for a reason, folks. They're looking yeah. for a shepherd. So you might not be a leader and you might not have, like, the, the type of qualities that somebody's looking for in the leader. But they're called sheep for a reason. Give them direction. Give them something to walk away from, you know? I mean, uh, a thing of DVDs uh, at, like, an electronics store, like Best Buy, for example, 50 of them, 20, 30 bucks, you know? Yeah. Get a little techie. Download some some DVDs and hand them off to people, you know? Yeah. So Absolutely, or some thumb drives or whatever it is. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So it's, 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 um... It's exciting to be on this, on the, you know, with you guys on this level, right? On this plane, because yeah. it's never a dull moment and it keeps you accountable. Like if we're all together and we're all hamming it up and we're all talking about this stuff and we go live, we're all holding each other accountable, you know? So. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's what and a family we, does. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people... You know, it's, 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 it is hard. And especially when, if you're more, you know, if you're more public about it and the people that are not just on YouTube, the people that are in your life know that you're investigating, it's hard. You get a lot of pushback, man. You do. And, it, and I, th I don't think people realize that. And I love the people that are, you know, so quick to just be like, go back to third grade, bro. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, you know what I mean? It's like, come on, dude. Like, 
Like, you know, it's... Have a like, I've never heard that one before, thing. you know? Yeah, sorry. Are you going to tell me to drink bleach next, too? You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Like, why don't you have a little elevation in your discourse? So, I find it funny that most people, if you were to ask them, um, the, you know, and tell them, you know, a, a, re a truly intelligent person will admit that they don't know everything. It's, you know, and the, a lot of these... Uh, major detractors we have we don't have to go into names you know they say well just look at this man just look at this you know and it it's so funny because it, you, you think that we don't know your model you think that we <laughs> right. it's like you think that we, we didn't have this rammed down our throats so we're looking at a couple different aspects we're not just looking at flat earth we're looking at alternative cosmology we're looking into a astral projection different natures of our reality and you just look at one thing. So how is it that you're calling me unintelligent when I admit that I don't know everything there is to know and I'm going to make mistakes, but I'm going to look at different things. And I just, the disconnect there is very interesting to me because like I said, if you were to ask more people, well, who is the smarter, more intelligent person? The person that is 100% sure they know of everything and is completely dogmatic and won't look, won't question, or the person that's willing to investigate research and say hey man i might not have all the answers i might there might be more to it than you know us spinning in space going around a a, a giant nuclear fusion ball you know what i mean so it, it, i find it funny when we're, we're we're constantly called unintelligent yet we're the only ones looking into different things you know mm -hmm. yeah well when i was at the xl energy center recently for the wnba game I, I looked right at the building when I was talking to this guy who, <laughs> who, who after I kind of again gave, gave him a Reader's Digest of Gematria, and I was like, this is really why I don't watch sports anymore, because there are some interesting things about Gematria that line up with sports and news headlines. I don't yeah. know, it's just, it's weird, you know, but, um, but that, that's beside the point. I saw Russell Wilson hand the ball off, uh, throw the ball on third down instead of handing it off to Skittles and he throws an interception when I'm, yeah, things when I'm like that. you know, that's just like, what, what he's like the best running back and you're at the one yard line and you're not going to hand it. Like if I'm playing Madden, that's what I'm doing. I'm plugging, I'm going for it on fourth down and I'm going for a touchdown. This is a Super Bowl, dude. And if we score a touchdown, you guys have a minute to go. So give me a break, you know, but anyways, yeah. I'm explaining this to him, and he says, "Is your third eye open?" And I'm, I'm like, oh, wow. um, "You mean my pineal gland?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is that is that open?" <laughs> I just like turned around. And I just kind of started laughing. I was like, "I'm holding a sign telling people that the Earth is flat and not a ball, dude." And there's yeah. EMF, <laughs> EMF cell phone towers right above, on top of that Holiday Inn kitty corner from us, and and you asked me that. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, my man, I am here to shut this place down, the Excel Energy Center, because yeah. if I can shut this place down, what are people going to have to do? They're going to have to look at Flat Earth because they won't have yeah. anything else to distract them anymore. Yep. And it's kind of like the analogy uh, back in, if you want to use this analogy, you know, the Coliseum, Bread and Circus. Why do you think they put those fights on? Mm -hmm. They did it to keep people out of the streets and 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 not looking at the the conditions they're living in. They're just concentrated on this, uh, concentrated on something that yeah, it might be interesting to look at, but is it's not helping you in any way. Right. And we have these problems out here outside the Coliseum. You know what I mean? So right. it's like it's like you know, wake up a little. It's it's like we're all kind of. Uh, yelling you know screaming in the wind and it's and these people are like no I'm, I'm i'm happy to just i've had people admit to me um oh, yeah. we went down in the 16th street mall in denver me and a couple of us and uh we had some good luck with some people some not so good luck with some people but one guy actually said i said as long as you have i literally said the words so as long as you have your netflix as long as you have your basic little creature comforts you're happy to be lied to and he said yes i'm happy i'm fine and, and you know you're being lied to and you're happy with that. He's like, yeah, yeah, as long as I have my little creature comforts, I'm fine. And I just wanted to, like, smack my own face, smack myself in the face. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's really I don't know. sad, man. It it is so it's so sad to hear somebody say that. I've heard that said a lot. I've heard that said. Like basically, I love the lie I live, and I I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Just leave me alone. And they will be held accountable for what they just said. They are denying the opportunity to hear truth that could leave them in a completely, literally, a 180 degree direction. Like not just a little veer here or a little just a slight right, you know, turn here. They will literally have to be turned around and be held accountable for everything that they have done in their past that has led them up to that point where they're like, wow, I, I'm so sorry. I never realized this. Thank you for just being bold enough to share this information. And if I can just have one person even just have that little spark of that, even though they hate what I'm saying to them at the time, that's why we do this. You know, that's why we give them the opportunity to hear it because they don't know any other way because if we're not sent how are they going to hear and if they don't hear how are they going to know so and back to what you were saying before about um quotes in 1984 films football beer and above all gambling filled up the horizon of their mind to keep them in control was not difficult yeah i mean just the amount i mean and uh just the amount of pharmaceuticals out there um it's out of control, man. It, there, if you can't see that there is an obvious, uh, an obvious uh, agenda to keep people from looking into these subjects, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? It's, it's, they don't want, they don't want people investigating things for themselves. They want you to just take NASA's word for it. They want you to just take CNN's word for it, take uh, the government's word for it, and not look into it. And we're here. How do you looking into it? We're, we're being called unintelligent for doing it and that disconnect is very hard for me to bridge i i uh i don't know mm -hmm. trying to get through to some people is hard man yeah and to have them but. turn around and like almost you know th and that's the thing too is that's how that's how trained and programmed and indoctrinated we are in this country is if we see somebody kind of getting out of the fold if you will we, it's our it's our right like it's our um, you know, our, our position uh, to try to talk them back into coming back. You know, hey, man, you got way too far. Like, moon landing, JFK, okay, I can get that. But the Earth being flat, fake satellite, CGI, give me a break. You know, and it's yeah. like they feel like it's like their responsibility to, like, try to talk us down from the ledge and just, you know, be like, dude, don't, don't do it. Don't say those words f -f -f flat, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> it's like they're trying to save you from yourself. You <laughs> yeah, know I mean? right. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, it, um, it's fun though, man. It is fun. Hey man. And I just wanted to say shout out to what you're doing and, uh, for everyone listening, um, again, I'm talking to authentic intent and his channel link is in the description. Uh, I'm going to try and put these interviews on to iTunes. Um, another subject I'm actually really interested in is, is um, just a little backstory. So the reason I moved out to Colorado and got involved in the marijuana industry was for a number of reasons. But one of the ma more major ones for me, well, I was sick of obviously getting arrested for, you know, a little yeah, seed bet, right? and stuff. But, uh, and, uh, you know, there, you know, marijuana has its things too, and I would encourage people to, uh, always, you know, take a break and don't get stuck and because it can suck your ambition if you're not careful. But anyway, the real reason I got into it was because I, I see I've, I'm helping um, a couple of elderly people right now and I'm helping them get off pain pills and uh, and and use use uh, use more natural means, organic food and, and to, to uh, treat some things. So that's really why I came out here. I saw a lot of death and destruction on the East Coast. I lost a lot of my friends to pharmaceuticals, man. A lot of my friends to pharmaceuticals. So I'm really interested. I've never really heard um, that your story with that and the cystic fibrosis and your awakening to the uh, big pharma deception. And that's something I really wanted to talk to you about, actually. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, it's... Um... 
it's taken me a while to kind of Velcro myself away from such um, lifting up of people kind of because we do in this, you know, particularly in this country, we, you know, and I'll give them credit. We do have a really, really great healthcare system with people who, <laughs> who are ignorant, you know, they're ignorant to what's going on, but they, they do have a right heart. And so I say that we have a good healthcare system because I've been overseas. I've been to yeah. Southeast Asia and we do have it really good here. But you have to have discernment about what it is that you're going to get taken care of. Like yesterday morning, I got I went to the dentist and I had two teeth pulled. One of them chipped, you know, so what are you going to do? So then I had to have yeah. another one pulled because it was right next to that one and it just made more sense or else I get it capped, right? Okay. Yeah. A dentist is somebody that if you're going to need during the zombie apocalypse, right? And if you don't oh, yeah. have one. <laughs> yeah, you're SOL. <laughs> you are time, SOL. Man. That is gonna hurt a lot. You'll pass out. Oh I almost, God. I almost passed out, and I was novocained up in the mouth. I didn't get, you know, yeah. laughing gas. If you've or ever anything. had a seriously infected tooth, if you've ever had a really infected tooth, you know, I've had so such a bad infected tooth, and it's been like maybe two in the morning or whatever it is, and it's almost gotten to the point where I'm like, I'm about to take this tooth out myself with a pair of pliers. That's how bad it hurts. So you're right. Like, there are very good aspects. The fact that if you get in a car accident, you can just be immediately treated. You know what I mean? You don't yeah. have to go in the back of a rickshaw and travel 56 miles to the hospital. So we have good things. But I think mm -hmm. we have a lot of bad things, too. So so many bad them things. Out, them outlawing CBD federally. Um, when CBD is non-narcotic, it's the non-narcotic part of marijuana. It does nothing to you. I, you could take a dump truck of CBD and put it into somebody's in, into my mouth, and it's not going to affect me narcotically, but it's going to bring down inflammation. It's going to fight cancer, and they do a lot of damage, man. So they they do good things, but they do a lot of damage. You know, you, you have somebody that might walk in for a little bit of depression, you know, and ask him for a little health. And they walk out the door with 16 prescriptions. You know what I mean? So what woke – when um, – I'm interested to hear about if, – if you're comfortable talking with it, it's up to you talking about it. Um, how did you realize that um, – I saw your work with the uh, – what is it? The Cystic Fibrosis Foundation or yeah. – um, when did you kind of – when was when did you realize that they were doing more harm than good – more harm than good? You know <laughs> – uh, it's a God thing, to be honest with you. Um, okay. it's, it's just one of those things where I just started being led down a particular path of questioning. Just like, I, you know, to be honest with you, man, I don't know how it came about, but I'll, I'll tell you where I'm at right now. Um, it led me to investigate the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and see that there could be some, uh, discrepancies about the diagnosis of CF, it being a genetic disease, uh, where it could possibly be a selenium deficiency, which is a mineral that a lot of people are deficient in, particularly yes. white Caucasian women from, you know, quote, Europe, right? And so when the mother and the father are both selenium deficient, they oh, okay. could possibly create a, a, a male or a female that has a, quote, cystic fibrosis. Now, where is the main source we should be getting our selenium from? Is is it found naturally? Um, yeah, it is found naturally. Um, you do you do gotta eat quite a bit of Brazilian uh, Brazilian nuts to to get them. Like you know, probably like a half a cup or so a day or something. Um, and that's one of the options that I have found in the past. But I have found some good organic um, selenium um, kind of B twelve ish combination. Um, it's like 60 to 90 day pills for, you know, 30, 40 bucks, you know, so they are fairly expensive, but I mean, that's 60, 60 days worth, you know, so I do know you that, find that it, I'm sorry, do you find it better take, do you find it works better in pill form or when you're trying to get it from food? Um, I eat all the time. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. um, for me, it's not a big deal, but it is something that you have to build a habit for. You know, so okay. eating the pills, I mean, eating the nuts 
is an acquired taste because they are fairly big nuts. I mean, they're Brazilian nuts. Braz no, it's just that's what, what – what's the name of it? Just Brazilian yeah, tree just, nut or yep, Brazilian, Brazilian nuts? tree nuts, yeah. You can get them at um, most of your like you know Whole Foods type of places or your um, – mm -hmm you know natural food stores some of them will have them um and they are fairly expensive so they are like a 11 to 12 dollars a pound but they are some you know pretty now kind of what pretty is um, what does selenium do for your body what is um like why what is it doing that's helping you and what is it doing when you don't have enough of it that's hurting you you know that, and that's a good question. I, I didn't really delve a whole lot into what it was, um, what like the lack thereof of it is. Okay. Um, so I'll, I I can kind of be honest with you about that. I just I just knew that when people with particularly cystic fibrosis that are born, they have like a sweat problem with them. And back in the um, 1600s or so, when cystic fibrosis kind of had its first case in Europe. <laughs> it was labeled as some kind of a sweat disease. Like it's the sweat of death type of deal. And yeah. Like something was just wrong with your sweat glands. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so, okay. um, it, it's, it's really, uh, disheartening to hear. So kind of just a, qu a quick reader's digest version of, of how I kind of fell into that is there was a guy named, um, Dr. Joel Wallach and I'll put him in here and he does have some extensive, um, so that guy right there, Joel Wallach, and I'll throw it on your side too. Um, you can look into him. He has a, a book called Dead Men Don't Tell Tales, uh, Dead Doctors Don't Tell Tales or something like that. Okay. And he was a doctor with the, I think he's the current CEO. Um, they're kind of in between CEOs right now for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. But there's a, a Dr. Beal. I think this is his name, Dr. Beal, B-E-A-L-E. -E. Um, both of them were working on people with cystic fibrosis. And Joel Wallach had done some studies with monkeys. And he found that monkeys who had what he, seen, he felt like were selenium deficient he and developed some kind of a case of cystic fibrosis and they kind of tried to compare it. He found that if he continued to give those monkeys uh, cystic, um, selenium, that they would be better off for it. And through his studies, he found that. And I was able to, on my iPad a while back, get a double-blind study of some humans that were given selenium and then given a placebo. So the people with selenium and cystic fibrosis were uh, given that I think over a six month period or something like that and they showed significant improvements in their wow. lung functions and everything else and Beal saw Joel Wallach's work and he got upset and so him and his comrades Beal uh, got rid of Joel so they fired oh. him and funny story about that is years later he comes out with a book right so kind of like hey yeah that's great you found this and everything but we're already here we're developing the cystic fibrosis foundation and everything and so you need to kind of go but we'll give you a book deal and we'll allow you to continue teaching your quote science right about cystic fibrosis and the selenium comparison and so that's what he got he got a book deal and everything was okay. quote kosher after that and so that kind of led me into the whole, you know, why is it that they don't ever take pictures of Earth from space, right? Like, they yeah. tell us it's a ball, but why don't they ever just do it and just show us? And so the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and my hospital here, I was in conversation and correspondence with some of the people that would you would consider higher ups, and they have no reasoning to investigate selenium and so they won't even they won't even they won't even like if you go in for standard medical um cf treatment right i think it's that's it would be cystic fibrosis is c right yep or is it s okay CF. um yes yeah if you go in for a standard cf treatment and uh they they won't even talk about selenium no it's it's just a mineral you know it's just like 
Yeah, sure. I mean, because they have all this science backing up what cystic fibrosis is. It's a genetic disease, right? And mm -hmm. yeah, of course, it might be now, you know, yeah, but because yeah. you haven't treated the organism for decades. So if you'd leave something untreated for decades, it's going to eventually develop into what it is now. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's going to be passed down. So, so from that, right, um, I, I did some more. Uh, so I'm trying to get a hold of the cystic fibrosis people, and they're not talking to me. So one of my live streams that I did shortly after I, I debuted on Earth Day was going to the cystic fibrosis walk, which I have done in the past, ignorantly I've thinking, seen that, yeah. you know, thinking that, you know, yeah, these people are raising money for a good cause. Well, <laughs> come to find out that they have a new vest machine. And so how they treat most cystic fibrosis patients is with a, basically a kind of a smaller air compressor. The tubes are hooked up to a vest and that vest shakes the upper body to help loosen the mucus along with an aerosol type, you know, device. So you have, you know, your aerosol or you have another pharmaceutical drug called Kaleidico or you like have, a steroid. yeah, and, and um, yeah. Uh, another one called um, Pulmazyme. Okay, so um, that is when I found some interesting uh, similarities with their new vest treatment. And I have the, the new emblem on my screen here, it just so happens to be a mockingbird. That's their new emblem oh, wow. on their new vest machine. Interesting. So and I think I saw you, um, and it's extremely expensive, I'm sure, to buy this machine. Yeah, right? yep, yep. And so insurance, um, you got to go through your insurance process. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a wireless machine now. And so my investigation led even further into the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation where... In the early 2000, like around 2000, 2001, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation uh, invested $150 million into this company called Vertex, right? And so uh, they, this was a pharmaceutical company that they felt um, that they wanted to uh, kind of put their money in and see where their money goes, you know, because they were investing their money, right, into wanting this um, this this uh, this new drug and so 15 or so years later they uh, they end up um, kind of back they they collected all their money I'm trying to get to this website here I'm, I'm gonna show you some more um, coincidences with this company called vertex mm -hmm. um, but uh, so because of conflict of interests they felt like they should pull out of their um, investment. And that investment 15 years later turned out to be $3.3 .3 billion. Wow. What a weird number. Yeah, right? Wow, that's very <laughs> interesting. And especially like the mocking, but that's very interesting, man. So what is it? When I saw the one video of you talking to the um, of talking to them about this machine, was that a uh, was that the walk, or were they just out there promoting that particular machine? Yeah, that was during the walk, and they were promoting their other another machine that was funded and is funded by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And so wow. it's kind of like upgrading your cell phone, and that's kind of how she came up, came to me about it. And I'm like, she did not seem happy. You were there at all. Know. No, they, they, they were not happy. So um, this is the pharmaceutical company's emblem that the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation threw $150 million into. And then 15 years later, they uh, got $3.3 .3 billion. Um, for, for those that are watching this video later, it's a, uh, it's, a, um, it's a logo with the word vertex inside of a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like... Oh man. <laughs> so, hey man, I just I just collect connect the dots and I just present the information. That's that's all we can do, man. You know. Yeah. So, and people who are awake, they know what Project um, MK Ultra Mind Control is, the the Mockingbird Butterfly Program, and we all know what a pyramid represents. And so, it just. It just blew my mind, man. And so, yeah. yeah, I was heated when I went to the to the walk a little bit. And I did bite my tongue a little bit. 
and the establishment representatives came up to me and they we had a conversation and and I out of anybody there I felt like it was my right and my opportunity to speak my mind especially when you've been affected by this personally yeah you know what I mean yeah and so the people who are asleep they're not going to see these comparisons they're not going to see the 3.3 billion dollars yeah. um, invested walking away and so uh, yeah, so that is that is my I guess if you want to call it justification for being upset at the pharmaceutical companies and knowing that me and my fellow seventy thousand cystic fibrosis, um, you know, uh, diagnosed patients are worth fifty thousand dollars a piece because wow. now the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation has over three point six billion dollars, and they won't talk about selenium. They won't talk about selenium. They wow. won't talk about the similarities of 3.3, .3, Mockingbird, and the pyramid symbolism. But yeah, most importantly, they won't just do a simple one-year, two-year test on newborns or maybe even – because a mother can be diagnosed with having this, quote, cystic fibrosis gene in her because, uh -huh. uh, you know, it's like – Someone was uh, saying in the chat that they won't accept donated eggs from women that – have this in their gene. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, and I'll I'll tell you this right here. Uh, they won't allow me to donate blood. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. This so. yeah, that's insane, man, dude. And that's a a big part of a uh, um there are all these different aspects to this, but we have to recognize that pharmaceuticals are playing a role in this deception by keeping people um, keeping people not healthy, basically. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That, whether it's mentally or physically, we've got all these pharmaceuticals. We've got Zoloft, Prozac, Xanax, Ritalin, opioids, Oxycontin. And if people were, you know, you always hear so-and-so on this, so... But if you add it all up, if you add all those drugs up, it's a massive, massive amount. And so not only do we have to com combat the deception that they're getting through information, but we have to com com uh, combat some, uh, a pharmaceutical dumbing down. It, it, it kind of is like we got a version of Brave New World out here, you know? Um, so I guess what I'm asking is what do you think the uh, – um, in, in this particular area with the big pharma, how do you think we can, how do you think we can break through that? How do you think we can wake people up to some of these old alternative, uh, alternative? There is a big alternative health movement, but how do you think we can wake people up to these particular things? Um, well, the the alternative healthcare movement is still unfortunately controlled. It is a narrative that. The establishment is in control of as much as they're in control of organic fruit and vegetables you know yeah and so yeah. and and same thing with the whole gluten thing so the only thing that i can say is and i and i i, I say this because i'm trying to I'm, I'm living a sober life right now i feel like to be accountable and to be my what my channel stands for and to be the person that i want people to see as my testimony when i go out into public especially when i'm dealing with kids I live a sober life right now, you know, so, but I'll tell you one thing, um, some of my better experiences when I was using marijuana medicinally, and so I'm not endorsing the use of marijuana by any stretch of the imagination. I am not a doctor, and I do not prescribe to be a doctor. These are just my opinions, and this is under yes. fair use, but I do understand that there is some benefits to using it on a medicinal level um, therapeutically every once in a while um, to use it every day for 30 years like some people have said that's your lifestyle yes. and if that's how you want to live your life that's great but soon you don't understand what is you and what is the plant and yeah. so I think that there are I think there are more medicinal uses separate from smoking it and yes, smoking yes. it <laughs> has been um, demonized as kind of like, um, it's just it's just smoking. And a lot of the, you know, suits and the soccer moms look at that as kind of being like, uh, yeah, I just, I don't, I can't see you do that, okay? You know, so don't, don't 
Yeah. You know, don't do that. But, you know, they'll eat it, you know. <laughs> yeah. They'll use it as yeah. an oil, you know, or whatever. And, and you're right about that, too. And I would encourage people to um, – me personally, I would rather anybody pick up a joint rather than a beer or even uh, a pain pill. Just for me personally, that's my opinion. Um, but I would encourage people too, even myself, you've got to take a break. You can't just uh, – you got to take a break every once in a while, get a clear head and see from a different perspective. You know what I mean? You can't let yourself get into a, a fog. Yeah. And uh, the one thing I would say – too is that like i said i'd rather you any people pick up that because i think it's um less harmful but i would not encourage it for young people um only for um, um for medically yes because like you said we, we have ways of using it medically that's not narcotic mm -hmm. but if you're younger i i would stay away from it because it, the one thing me personally it sucks away a lot of your ambition for me personally yeah and uh you kind of get comfortable and you kind of get a you get a little comfy. You get a little too comfy. You get, is all sometimes I would say. you get a little prideful too. You know, you get yeah. a little arrogant. You know, like you think like you're. Excuse me, I'm eating a donut here, but oh, you, you get a little. <laughs> you get a little arrogant. You get a little like kind of high and mighty. You know. Yes. It like can you, happen, you can yes. like read the future or something like that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, absolutely. So, um, but uh, I have seen a lot of. Uh, I have like I like I said personally, I'm helping some people that have some extreme arthritis. Um, use this just to kind of get a good night, restful night's sleep, and 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 it's not smoking it. It's just a little under your tongue to get a good night's sleep. And these are people that have been taking pain pills. These are people that have been uh, had had drugs pushed on them that have really dra jacked them up from the pharmaceutical uh, perspective. So um, yeah, that's it. And I and I'm just I was really interested in that because dude, you 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 have a lot of um. Authentic intent, man. <laughs> you have yeah, a lot of authentic right. intent, you, and you come from a really, uh, a really good place, and uh, you have a lot of knowledge, man. And I really appreciate you coming on and just talking, talking about it, man. A lot of people are uh, really interested in your side of the story and um, in how you approach people, man. You're you're having a lot of success out there. Yeah, I appreciate that. I um I did want to give you give give you my, one more point and opinion about why. I feel the marijuana industry is where it's at right now, and that's because of the tobacco and cotton industry. Um, they understand that people are slaves to cigarettes, and they understand that cotton is a cheaper uh, form of clothing for them, and hemp could actually be used in more ways than just for clothing. And so I think that it is unfortunate that we have such a monopoly and a drive to keep this out and, it, and they are focusing more on the smoking side because it is looked down upon by most of the people who are older than us and yeah. those are the people who write the laws right now yeah. and so um, if we are able to as a younger generation than them show them that we can handle what is given to us because some kids can't handle it some kids yeah. can't handle drinking a beer and you just shouldn't drink a beer dude you shouldn't yeah. be drinking Mountain Dew. You know, there's some, yeah. some things that kids are put into uh, an environment or a diet or whatever because of peer pressure or whatever, and it's not their scene. And unfortunately, kids stay in that scene because of they want friends, they want a girl, they want a boyfriend, or um, they're just, yeah. quote, living the life. And I, I just, I really encourage a lot of kids to, to, to step away from that scene for a while and and focus on yourself let your let yourself develop into an intelligent human being that can rationally think and critically think about the world in which we live that can that stuff can wait that's all that stuff is always yeah. going to be there yeah you know? it's not going anywhere it's not going yeah. anywhere. And, and i would say the same thing i would you know what like and especially now i wish i had when i was younger and when i started when i was you know younger there wasn't the you know this massive amount of information and i think too a lot of kids fall into it because they have nothing to do yeah. and they're, they they go to school, you know, and, and a lot of kids know, they don't necessarily know the earth is flat, you know, obviously, but a lot of them know when they go to school, they're not getting the real information. A lot of kids will come out and be like, you know, oh, how was that history class? And they'll just be like, yeah, that's some more BS. Who knows? You know what I mean? Like a lot of kids know that they're being kind of misled. And like now I wish I wish I had what we have now, YouTube and, and just, uh, the way to find any information when I was younger, because 
a lot of the kids, they just, uh, as like I come from a town in New Jersey, and um, they, the kids have nowhere to go. You know, they, there's no... Uh, there's no like activities for them to do besides, you know, the you know, high school sports or whatever. There's no uh alternative things for them to do. So they fall into this pattern of just, you know, maybe smoking one weekend and then drinking the next weekend and then it just it, it just snowballs, you know what I mean? So you're you're absolutely right. I'd see, I would say it could wait, you know. I would encourage them to uh expand their minds and their information and knowledge, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and you hey you want to expand your mind, young people? Look into flat Earth. <laughs> yeah, boy. You know. Hell yes. I mean. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. What no, I, I was just, I, I just, yeah. If you want to expand your mind and get to another level that you've never been before, get on that tip. Yeah. yeah. Okay, man. We've been on for an hour and a half. I want to keep these, you know, relatively uh, not too long. So, real quick. What uh? What do you have planned for? What should people look out for from authentic in- intent? Um, what are your plans going forward? Well, later this week, the Minnesota Twins are hosting the Cleveland Indians and I think the Detroit Tigers. So, we're planning on doing an episode downtown Minneapolis during uh, one of those games. Next week, we got the University of Minnesota starting up their classes, oh, cool. and I've had a lot of really good conversation with college kids there. And so I really can't wait until, you know, that starts up. Then we have Minnesota Vikings preseason football towards the end of the, the month here. So I'm going to hit up uh, U.S. Bank Stadium and either hang out outside or, you know, hit up the inside of the stadium. And we got that going on. And oh, very cool. September 11th is opening day, which is a Monday night football game. Minnesota Vikings host the New Orleans Saints. Adrian Peterson is coming back to play in his old stadium that he built for one year and then left. And that's on September 11th. So we're going to hit people with, you know, uh, 9-11 truth pills and flat earth. So um, Absolutely, dude. That is, that is cool. And uh, just for the people that aren't familiar with your content, you're going to be live streaming all of this? Yeah, we're going to be live. It's really the only thing that... Uh, <laughs> it's the only thing worth watching nowadays. I mean, you know, everything that's pre-recorded. Uh, just in my opinion, I think that there are people that are doing some really great, great things, either out in public or you know, videos that they're doing and compilations and whatnot. But we're hitting people where they're at, unscripted. I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you, you know that it's that it's brand new and fresh. You know, so yeah. yeah you're seeing it as it happens for me too. So I think that's Absolutely. just, that's awesome because it, it gives us a, a new um, experience that, uh, you know, that you can't get on TV because everything that we see live on TV has a, a delay. So. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's, that's awesome, dude. So you tell people to get out there in public, huh? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Hey, man, I really appreciate you coming on and doing this interview, man. Um, shout out to what you're doing. And for anyone that's listening, you can find um, you can find Authentic Intent on YouTube at uh, Authentic Intent. And uh, his live streams will be coming up. So definitely stay tuned. And thank you again, man, for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it too, Jimmy. And uh, God bless you too and everything that you do. And I'll spam your link. It's also in my link uh, description here too, guys. So check out CTA, he does a lot of uh, morning hangouts too. So if you're an early bird on the weekends, come on in and have some pancakes. <laughs> Thank you, brother. All right, man. Um, I'm gonna end this stream real quick so it records. So hold on. And uh, if you're if you're in the chat in my end, uh, I'm just gonna end this stream so it records real quick. Thank you all for stopping by, and uh, thank you, authentic. Hey, so let me stop thanks, this man. real quick. All right. And we're good. Hey, man, thank you again, dude. I really appreciate yep. it, dude. That was awesome. <laughs> um, are you, you going to keep live streaming tonight? Uh, no, I'm going to sign off too, guys. Um, everybody in the chat, uh, I will see you all on the flat side. And I do want to make a quick plug too. I don't typically ask for contributions or shares, but if you would share or um, I'm just $200 away from getting a billboard here in Minneapolis during the Minnesota State Fair that state fair is the biggest uh, state fair in the country 
in a 10-day period. We have over 2 million people coming in and out of Minnesota during that state fair. So um, I just encourage everybody just to swing by and check it out. Heck yeah, dude. And uh, uh, hey, man, are you on Facebook? Yeah, I am. Yep. Um, what's uh, what's your Facebook name, if you don't mind me asking? Joshua Swift. Joshua Swift. All right. I'm